Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Bob McCauley. Um, I own the Watershed Wellness Center in Lansing, Michigan, and uh, I'm gonna talk to you about great health, natural health, the kind of health most people just uh, dream about. Um, it's obtainable, your body is capable of healing itself of any disease. You just need to stop putting the wrong things into your body and start putting the right things into your body. Uh, disease not, does not come from our genes, you don't inherit that from your parents or your grandparents, you know, cancer runs in my family. That's all a bunch of nonsense. Uh, I've been doing this for, well, I've been been in business 30 years and I've been doing, I've been, you know, doing health now for 25 years. And as I said, I'm, I'm a naturopathic doctor. Um, I'm a certified uh, nutritional uh, consultant and a certified master herbalist. Uh, so it took me like eight years to get all those degrees and everything most of what I know about health is through experience. So if you can, you can study all you want, you can watch all the videos you want, read all the books you want, uh, you gotta do it. And that's what really what I do. Um, I'm the author of eight books on health, one on fiction. This is not, my, my latest book is uh, Chlorella and Spirulina, Kings of All Superfoods. And by the way, my, my books are all available on audible.com. So if you look up Bob McCauley, N.D., then you will uh, find my books on Audible, and um, and uh, you can read them or you can get the books themselves. But what I'm going to talk about today is this book, and uh, it's really one of my favorites and one of my biggest sellers for sure. The temple he was referring to was his body. Those are the words of our Lord, uh, Jesus Christ. And um, you know, basically, he was saying, "Look, this is." you know, destroy this temple and I'll raise it in three days. And he was referring to the temple in Jerusalem, but for his body. So he's referring to his body as a temple. So you got to remember when you stop, start putting the wrong things into your body, well, you know, um, you're, you're putting it into your temple. Um, you know, I always, you know, I won't go into everything I believe about uh, the body itself, but, uh, you know, when you do get sick, it's because, uh, you know, you have... Uh, put the wrong things in your body. Like I tell people all the time, you know, I wish there was pizza. Um, it was a great healthy food, but it's not. So I don't eat that. And uh, I wish burgers were nice and healthy and french fries and uh, soft drinks, Coca-Cola, uh, fried chicken, all this stuff. I don't, don't we all wish this was incredibly healthy, but it's not. Uh, what is healthy are, you know, what comes from nature. And when you follow nature, um, you'll be healthy and when you get away from nature you're not going to be healthy now I always tell people for instance you know Doritos people love Doritos they love potato chips well there's no Dorito bush there's no Dorito there's no potato chip tree um, you know uh, um, you know slices of pizza don't grow out of the ground we make all those things so the way I stay, stay healthy more than anything else is I eat raw fruits and vegetables that's literally 95 percent of my diet and, um, and, you know, so because, again, God, I always tell people, God grew an apple, but we made a frying pan. And you cannot improve on God's creation. I mean, the, 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 uh, if you make an apple pie, it tastes better, okay, but it's not healthy. And an apple is an example of what is, and an apple pie or a cooked apple is an example of what was. So you want to look at it those terms. And uh, what I'm going to talk to you here for about the next 25, 30 minutes is really uh, what belongs in the body and how you can stay healthy and where does it start and what do you got to do. I'm very specific about it. Um, so first of all, what do I do when I wake up in the morning? Well, I have a big tall glass of water. I mean, people get up in the morning and, you know, they start reaching for, you know, I don't know, a cup of coffee. Soft drinks is very common. You know, people drink Coke for breakfast. Um, they, uh, they want to eat breakfast right away. They want to, they don't want to drink any, any water. Water is the best time, you know, drinking water in the morning on an empty stomach is very, very advantageous to your health. Um, in fact, there's very few things that are more healthy than drinking water in an empty stomach. Um, just because it really gives your body, you 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 haven't eaten, you know, hopefully not, you haven't eaten for at least eight hours. You shouldn't eat right before you go to bed. Like, for instance, I eat around 6 o'clock at night, and then I don't eat again until noon the following day. So you're looking at maybe, what is that, 18 hours. So I'm, 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 I usually have a fast every single day, anywhere from at least 12 hours, more like 15 to 18 hours every single day. So you hear about all this intermittent fasting and all this kind of stuff. Call it whatever you want. 
the healthiest thing you can possibly do at any given time is stop eating and fast fast and uh, you don't have to go on a 10-day fast or a 30-day fast um, you can go on a one day or a two day or a three day fast but if you really want to cleanse yourself this is the time to do it and especially when your body your stomach is clear your digestive tract is clear and that's when you can take a lot of things uh, for instance a lot of supplements that I recommend um, first thing in the morning and um, you know in an empty stomach that's when they become really effective if you already got a, a, a stomach full of food that's you know your supplements it's not that it's going to hurt them or anything but they're not nearly going to they're not going to be as nearly effective for you as if you if you take them on an empty stomach for instance first thing i do is i drink water and i'm getting into what kind of water uh, it's another one of the books i've written um, on, on alkaline ionized water uh, some people call it kangen water but it's really alkaline ionized water and I wrote a whole book on that and here's my book on my biggest seller and it shows you that people are so interested in water and um, you know what kind of water do you drink well you don't drink purified water and you drink either well filtered tap water or you drink alkaline ionized water and you buy a water ionizer and run it through there and I have been doing that for 25 years actually probably more almost 28 years now and it's the number one thing that keeps me uh, healthy. It keeps me clear-headed. It keeps my mind clear. I'm well hydrated. Um, I feel fantastic. You know, I'm, I'm 67. I still run a six-minute mile. And, uh, you know, the reason I don't eat, run a five-minute mile is because uh, I don't choose to. That's the truth. I mean, I'd have to do a lot of training for that, and I'm just not interested. But I am interested in staying healthy. We'll get into exercise a little bit longer, a little bit later. But... Um, again, honoring the temple of God in that book tells you everything I'm going to tell you here. It's only this book is not that thick of a book. Okay, it's not a really thick one. Um, my water book is much uh, thicker. Really, we're talking about 110 pages here. So um, 110 pages. You read my book, listen to my book, and you're going to know what to do. It's just as simple as that. And you're going to honor the temple that God gave you because this is your body. And if you're sick, I don't care with whatever it is, in particular chronic disease, such as cancer, arthritis, diabetes, you know, MS, muscular sclerosis, all these diseases, uh, you know, even, you know, Alzheimer's, um, or even, which is, you know, obviously that's just dementia, Parkinson's disease, those are brain diseases. Uh, they also happen in part because of dehydration, but there's also things, other things going on there. We won't get into that today because really I wanted to talk about just basic health. But uh, you just got to remember when you've got a disease, you're the reason you got it. And I'm trying to empower you to know that you are the solution to that disease. Okay, you're the one. You, you caused it and you can fix it. And that's what the empowering part is. Uh, if you want to run to the doctors, the medical doctors, that's what you should do. Go run to them and, and get your, you know, get your, uh, your pills your pharmaceuticals, uh, your radiation, your chemo, your uh, what, whatever they got going for you. You can do all those things or you can follow nature, which is what I'm recommending here. And, um, and you're going to be incredibly healthy, incredibly healthy. So I get up in the morning. I have a nice big tall glass of alkaline ionized water. I do take some serapeptase. Uh, that's a systemic enzyme, so natokinase. These are the things that are really, really healthy first thing in the morning because they get into the lower G GI and they lower inflammation in the body. And that gives your body a chance to heal itself. So, like, if you're sick with something, stop eating. If you get a cold or a flu and infectious disease, stop eating. Clear your blood. And I recommend for that silver. Do I have some silver? I don't have silver here. Um, but I do, I recommend silver, liquid angstrom silver. See, I sell these. This happens to be indium, but I sell liquid angstrom minerals because they're super effective. They go into the body. They go into the body through under, under the tongue, through the sublingual duct, and they get into your bloodstream. I had meningitis years ago. I won't go into it, but I you know, got through that within about 10 days. That's a killer. That's a 21% mortality rate. Um, I, I got it from the mosquitoes in Michigan. They were in the, the mosquitoes that year. A couple years ago, it was encephalitis in the mosquitoes here in Michigan, and we had a lot of them. And I know uh, so I heard about several people that died from that, even some of my customers' friends. Uh, they had passed away from encephalitis. So uh, I, t I didn't, I, actually, this disease came back on me. And when it did, 
Well, um, I had some uh, silver um, with me at the time. I happened to be in China, and I took it, and within a couple hours, I felt great. Um, so that would, taught me I had infectious disease because I didn't even know I had it. I thought it had been poisoned or got toxic or something. But this kind of shows you what you can do uh, when you have a strong immune system, which I do. So um, water is number one. Number two, spiruline and chlorella. That was the book I just showed you here a second ago. These are the two most powerful foods in the world. These are 60% protein. These are the two foods, the only two foods that you can, they're greatest survival foods or emergency foods you're ever going to find. But they, 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 they are the most nutritionally dense foods in the world and have the broadest array of nutrients of any foods known. And so, um, you know, I've been, I've been using this for my protein. I've been a vegetarian now 44 years. And I'll say it again, I run a six-minute mile. So this idea that you're going to become a vegan, and I've been a vegan 25 years, you're going to become a vegan, you're going to fall apart, and you're going to die is just nonsense. Um, if you have the right foods in your diet, and this is what you want. So I take a small handful of this with everything I eat, every meal. I only have a couple meals a day, um, and you really don't want to be eating all day long. You know, That's not really healthy. But um, I highly recommend uh, that you use this for your protein. They're 60% protein, these two foods. There are two types of algae. Chlorella is a green algae. Spirulina is what we call cyanobacteria. But um, the, if you use these, I take, again, about a handful. So we're talking maybe 12 to 15 tablets every meal, and that's all the protein you need for that meal. And then if you want to eat meat, fish, eggs, or dairy, strictly for the taste. I get the number one thing I believe it or not I get attacked on is um, is meat you know when you as soon as you say people are in love with meat it's really kind of interesting uh, again I haven't eaten meat in 44 years uh, you know I, I was in India at the time and I couldn't get uh, you know I, I just couldn't get good you know meat it was scary uh, it was too scary to see uh, where it was coming from and what it looked like so I just uh, didn't eat it and then it just stuck with me, 44 years, in October this year. So um, at any rate, you don't need meat, fish, eggs, or dairy because they're, you're eating, they're, they're, you know, I always tell people, uh, like I like my meat and everything and I like dairy and all this. And I say something, I say, we have something in common. I'm a, ve I'm a vegan and all the animals that you eat, they're vegans because the, 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 the animals that we eat, the chicken, the beef, even the fish um, and all the different type of animals we tend to eat um, tend to be ve are vegan are vegans and tend to be they are vegans they're all vegans we don't eat car carnivores that would be a cat or a dog or something like that we don't eat those foods um, but it just shows you they what they're doing is they're eating uh, things like uh, you know they're they're eating seeds or for instance or they're eating uh, whatever you know animals you know they the, the, uh, eating grain, they're eating uh, corn, whatever they're eating, and they're turning it into flesh, and then you're eating them. It's just like vitamin B12. If you want vitamin B12, uh, you say, well, you got to have meat for that. Well, you don't have to have meat for vitamin B12. It's actually what they call um, methylcobalamin. So the cobalt, the cobalt, do I have cobalt? Here's cobalt. Cobalt, that's why I take a little, that's liquid, and a, you know, cobalt in a probiotic. A friendly bacteria, some bacteria. That's what makes vitamin B12, and it makes a lot of your vitamins in your body, your B vitamins in your body as well. So there's really nothing that we need to eat from the animal world that we can't get in the plant world. Always remember that. You can be a vegan and be very, very healthy, especially if you've got those two superfoods, spiruline and chlorella, the most nutritionally dense foods the most the, with the broadest array of nutrients of any foods the only food you could s s survive on exclusively and get all your basic nutrients spirulina and chlorella you could survive on a lot of foods people survive on mcdonald's believe it or not but uh if you really want to be healthy in an emergency situation i fasted with these two superfoods here um about for 10 days that was many years ago i felt fantastic i had so much energy so that's number two is spirulina and chlorella so we've got water spirulina and chlorella and then raw fruits and vegetables i mentioned that at the beginning that's all i eat god grew an apple we made a frying pan you can't improve on what god gave us you know you, you don't find chronic disease in the in the wild 
Let's just let that sink in. Um, nobody's ever shot a deer or any other animal in the wild and brought it back and found it full of any infectious disease. Cancer, arthritis, fibromyalgia, multiple sclerosis, you name the disease, um, it just doesn't exist. However, um, you know, in, in, the, in the wild, they just don't exist. I mean, you can try to get people to, you know, uh, turn the turn some to turn the truth into a pretzel and say, well, we found a deer somewhere. Where nobody, the chronic disease does not exist in the wild. Infectious disease does. That's another issue, but chronic disease, no, it does not exist in the wild. So uh, we're the only species on earth that gets chronic disease, other than the animals we domesticate and put in a cooked food, puppy chow, cat chow diet. Yes, that is true. So. <clears throat> um, I eat exclusively raw fruits and vegetables. I, I tend to eat, I always have spirulina and chlorella with everything I eat. I eat a lot of fruit in, around noon, uh, you know, for lunch because it's light and I don't want too much heavy. And then at night I have a salad and I feel great. And um, I have as many different types of foods as I possibly can throughout the day, uh, you know, throughout the year. Uh, whatever's in season, you know, I, I have my big garden out there, so I was eating a lot of arugula, I had asparagus, I mean, you name it, onion, it doesn't really matter. I do put uh, balsamic vinegar, and I put some uh, apple cider vinegar on there, and uh, maybe a little tahini, I make a kind of a, a sesame seed, maybe a tahini sauce with that, but it's delicious. I mean, all summer I had tomatoes, I mean, my right out of my garden, my friend's garden as well, a lot of herbs I put in there. Again, it doesn't matter which raw food you, it, it technically does, but just eat raw fruits and vegetables. There's not a Dorito tree, I'm sorry. There's not a pizza bush. Um, you know, there's, uh, there's no hamburger tree. There's just, you know, an apple tree and there's uh, a cherry tree and, you know, all the, all the great foods, you know, that grow in the, you know, in the ground. You know, you've got grapes, obviously, you name it. There's hundreds and hundreds, really thousands of different foods, so many of which we don't even know about. But um, raw fruits and vegetables, it's your diet. That's the hard part of doing what I'm doing. Health is extremely simple, very simple to understand. Uh, I could give it to you in 30 seconds and that's all you need to do. Um, but very difficult to achieve because it's hard to control what goes into your mouth. You know, it's easy to control the words words coming out of your mouth. You don't go to grandma's house and start cussing up a storm. Uh, at least the d decent people don't, right? You don't do that. You don't start saying bad words in front of mom and, and the family and all that kind of stuff. You don't go to work and do that. So you can control your tongue. Uh, the the uh, the carnal pleasures of, of a person's life, that's much more difficult to uh, to control. But what goes into the mouth, what you eat, that's what's really hard to control. So, um, you know, that diet, you know, I like these foods, I like those foods. Some of them are nostalgia. You remember grandma's Christmas cookies because it was such a great time of year and she was such a warm person. And so it's hard for you to give that up. Maybe certain dishes were made around that time of the year. These are powerful psychological, you know, um, memories and they're going to make you always want to crave those foods and like them. And they're hard to break, I will tell you that right now. And of course, we learn these traditions about eating cooked foods, and that, again, the source of all disease and is your diet, so it's mostly cooked foods. And then you have this processed foods. I mean, the idea that processed foods, I haven't eaten anything out of a box or a jar or a can. It's been uh, well over 40 years. I haven't really bought, you know, hardly anything out of a box or a jar or a can. You know, you might, I, I would, I don't anymore, but peanut butter or maybe tahini or uh, who knows, but almost nothing, almost nothing out of a box or a jar or a can. Um, and, um, you know, you just, you really don't need those things. Again, hard, hard not to eat those things because they're so tasty, but that's what you have to do if you want to be healthy. And, uh, you know, like I said, I'm in my 60s, I feel fantastic. So, you know, I'm not falling apart. I'm not looking at anything. Uh, I will definitely die of an accident. Okay. Maybe you murdered. Maybe. 
assassinated. That could, that's a bigger possibility, actually, is people, you know, they just don't like to hear the things that I say. Uh, you know, suicide, no, don't ever commit suicide. It's a very, very bad idea. Very, you know, what they say, bad karma, <laughs> very bad karma. You know, you're on a train, you started here, it's your train, don't jump off in the middle. Wait till it gets to the station and then get off. That's the way God planned it for you. So that's my opinion. And again, we're talking about, you know, honoring the temple that God gave you, okay? This is your body. It, can, it should be beautiful outside, and it should be beautiful and clean inside. And so many people do look beautiful on the outside, and they're just so dirty inside because they eat garbage. I've seen some of the most, you know, beautiful women. They just eat garbage. And then they get, they get very, very sick. I knew a, a young lady who used to work for me years ago. She was absolutely gorgeous. She got her gallbladder removed. She had the biggest junk food diet I've ever seen in my life. I mean, she, I kept warning her. She wouldn't listen to me. So that's number three, raw fruits and vegetables. What's next? Probiotics. Prebiotics, those are the friendly bacteria that you need. Prebiotics are fermented foods. Very easy to ferment food. There's lots of ways to ferment foods, many, many different ways. But really, the easiest way is sugar, uh, I'm sorry, water and salt. You just put it in there to clean your vegetables very well. People use like cabbage for kimchi, something kind of a little harder. You could use carrots, you can use um, burdock root, you, could, you name it. There's nothing you can't ferment. Uh, for foods and you put it in there it'll kind of turn cloudy in a couple of days and there is your fermented food right there but there's so many different ways to ferment foods but fermented foods are absolutely amazing and uh, and then probiotics the friendly bacteria so you got to have a clean digestive tract um, I take probiotics with every single thing I eat and I have a full spectrum probiotic that I sell and um, and then digestive enzymes I always have those it's really hard to digest your food. Those are a great assistance to you to, you know, you are what you eat. No, you're not. You are what you can assimilate. So if you can't assimilate nutrients into your body in the lower GI, the lower, you know, the small intestines, you're not getting any nutrients. And if, if it's all coated over inside those small intestines because you've been eating all this crap your whole life, you know, you get this kind of a coating inside, an interior coating, um, well, you know, you're going to be a very, very sick person, and um, and you're not going to absorb any nutrients, and that's the way it goes. So you got to clean yourself out. We go back to doing the fast, we, you know, drinking water first thing in the morning, okay? Um, you know, and if you're worried about, you know, like I drink, you know, probably a gallon of water every day, and people say, oh, I don't, you know, I don't, I couldn't do that much, or, you know, I, but I just tell you something. I would rather go to the ba the bathroom a thousand times than to go to the doctor doctor's office once okay so look at it that way um so a couple of extra trips to the bathroom because you're drinking so much water is well worth it okay so probiotics the friendly bacteria prebiotics these fermented foods these are what you need in your body digestive enzymes i have a full spectrum digestive enzyme very very important another one is uh, saccharomyces boulardii it's for the it's a type of 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 yeast uh, really good for the lower colon. I take that with every single meal. Uh, your consistency, consistency. Be always doing the same thing uh, in regards to your diet. But I mean, my foods again—they always are rotating in and out of my diet all all year all year long. You know, summer the tomatoes. You know, in the winter maybe I'm doing more of uh, radicchio. That's that kind of red cabbage. But it's always new, always something new, and it doesn't you know it doesn't really matter. I stay away from lettuce because it's nutritionally worthless. So just keep that in mind. And now we'll go on to the next one. Well, so we got probiotics, prebiotics, okay, number four, number five, the angstrom minerals. Now here's my full spectrum minerals. Minerals are the keys to start the engine of our health. There's 26 different basic minerals in here. There's really hundreds of these, what they call trace minerals that you need. And really, you know, somebody says there's 104 of those. Okay, that's fine. I do sell something that, like humic acid, that is really good. It's got all the different minerals in you, in your body, um, or your, that your body requires. But I do a full spectrum mineral, 26 different minerals that are, you know, are in the body. And then you take them, about a teaspoon, hold it in your mouth, and hold it under your tongue, and it goes directly into your body through your sublingual duct and uh, hits the bloodstream and then your body will use those. Um, but every, every single thing in your body uh, requires, you know, the most important mineral is, is magnesium because that's your heart mineral. So many people, number one reason people die, of course, heart attack, 
and um, it's even off the scale from cancers, maybe number two. But um, that's your magnesium is number one. Number two, of course, is iodine. I got some iodine here. Iodine, that's the highest frequency mineral that we have, and that feeds this. So this is your metabolism. So you need that iodine. I have another product that I call brown seaweed extract. Let's see if I got my brown seaweed. I don't know where you it's in cap it's in capsules because um because it's it's a type of seaweed lemonara so it's that big tall seaweed but it's been concentrated down not through heat at all we just kind of take out the fiber the, the insoluble fiber that you can't digest but amazing st stuff and it's the highest amount of uh iodine of any food in the world really hard to find iodine uh in 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 foods uh it's mostly in seaweed and uh, the idea that you're going to get in shellfish and this kind of stuff. Once again, they're eating the algae and accumulating it, and then you're eating them. So that's just a middleman. This is how it works with the animal world. Um, they're just eating things, and then you're eating them. It's a middleman. So uh, look at it that way if you really want to be healthy. So now um, some extra minerals. So like I said, there's about 26 basic ones. Um, and you've got to constantly feed your body with all these, you know, different minerals. Sodium, very, very important. If you lose all your sodium, I mean, you couldn't move. You know, potassium for the brain, but, you know, calcium. I mean, calcium has like 500 uses around the body. It's all, they all, but you've got to constantly get these minerals, and it's hard to get all of them from just foods, even if you're a raw foodist like myself. So I recommend you supplementing with the minerals and again they are the keys that start the engine of our health they're really critical you don't do anything uh without minerals you, your body can't function without all these different different types of minerals and let's not go into them gold for sleep you know i take gold it helps you to dream remember your dreams you know silver for killing all bacteria all that kind of stuff yeast mold and fungus but uh get them all take them all the time uh, I do them every single day, and they're super, super, super important. Minerals, very, very. Next one, number six, exercise. I mentioned that earlier. And vigorous daily exercise where you are breathing heavily, hopefully get some cardio in for 15, 20 minutes at least, okay? I work out. I still run a six-minute mile, so I I've always been a runner. Um, I still like to run. I like to work out hard. I'll go home tonight, It's uh, and I'll work out for 25, 30 minutes. That's it. I don't work out beyond 30 minutes because that's just, uh, it's not healthy for you. You build up too many free radicals and too much acidity in the body. Um, so I, I work out 25, 30 minutes. I try to exercise every single muscle in my body. I've got like a nice gym home, a gym at home. I do have a great elliptical. It's kind of a one, you know, it's a professional elliptical, meaning you find it in a gym where they're just meant to go all day long but i never miss my exercise um and i do it five days a week let's put it that way so very important that your exercise and keep that cardiovascular going and keep that breathing going and you just got to go if it if it's walking for you so I'm, I'm just like i can't hardly walk anymore then make it walking fine okay so just as long as you're you're breathing you don't have to be killing yourself like i'm i'm my record on the elliptical that's on level eight is I mean, I've got a it's an XT1. I've gone, um, I've gone uh, four miles in 20 minutes. So that is four five minute miles back to back. So that's my my record on the elliptical. So I'm really I'm really moving. But I generally do about three and a half 3.6 miles every single day. Well, five days a week. I take a couple of days off. You don't have to do it every single day. Um, but I'll, even on those days, I'm still getting a lot of exercise running around the office, going around the warehouse, moving out. You always want to stay active. Okay, so just almost gotten to the 30-minute mark here, but I don't want to forget number seven. And I don't have my book here, The Seven Components of Great Health. Um, I've got a whole bunch of these books, guys. I've been doing this so many years. This is a book that I'm going to publish. This is my first book, Confessions of a Bodybuilder. Okay, it's about water and uh, ionized water. 25th edition is coming out next year. That's going to be exciting. But number seven is a positive mental attitude. You can't you can't be negative and expect to be healthy. You got to keep this spot, and that's your that's your prayer life. That's your, uh, you know, your, your, you know, positive attitude, uh, not always thinking negative thoughts about everybody. I used to know a woman, her name was Hiawatha Cromer, 
and beautiful person, beautiful human. It was like, you know, we were buddies. We were friends, you know, and she, she had a lot of friends. She was a positive thinker. She just refused. You you get negative with her, and you know what she would do? Ignore you. <laughs> she just, I'm not going to listen to it. She would just go on. So here, number seven, positive mental attitude. you got to stay positive. you got to stay, again, honoring the temple of God and staying positive and having that prayer life and always knowing that God is with you. Well, we've reached around 30 minutes. That's what I wanted to talk to today, um, to you about that length of time and tell you that this is your temple. Your body is your temple of God. Um, you know, honor it in every way you possibly can. Uh, don't do the wrong things. Don't don't abuse it. Don't take drugs. Um, I, I don't. <clears throat> um, and, uh, you know, put the foods that belong in it that, that God gave us. God gave us an apple to eat. God gave us asparagus, and he didn't give us a frying pan. So I know you want to always think, How am I, what am I going to cook tonight? Well, I'm not going to ever, I don't ever cook anything. You know, my wife goes out there, and she makes me a salad, and that's it. Pretty nice, you know, I don't have to say, well, I want my chicken tonight, and tomorrow night I'm going to have my beef wellington. I just, tomorrow I'm having a salad. Tonight I'm having a salad, but on Friday I'll be having a salad. So it's a salad every night, but it's always something different. And believe me, it's always great. Don't 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 mistake that um, I'm eating a bunch of foods and I'm not. I'm not. I really find these things delicious. But it's a lifestyle change. So there you go. That is my take. I hope you look at my books. Bob McCauley, N.D. I'm a naturopathic doctor, um, and not an M.D. Not a medical doctor. N.D. Natu nat like a, nat a nature doctor, a naturopath. And uh, you go to Amazon.com. Look that up. Uh, naturopathic doctor or you look up um, go to audible same thing uh, most of my books are on audible there are audio versions of everything and I just want to see people get healthy because we don't need to live like this stay away from processed foods and stay away from cooked foods as much as you possibly can and if you stick with like maybe just a little bit of bread or or, or just maybe a little rice or maybe some beans or maybe quinoa is a really good one just a little tiny bit you're going to be okay just make sure most of your diet is raw fruits and vegetables Honor the temple that God gave you, Dr. Bob McCauley. Come and check me out, Watershed Wellness Center, and we're at watershed.net. We'll see you guys another time. Have have a, a good a good afternoon, a good evening, or wherever you are, and stay positive, and I'll say this, God bless.